here we have the electric motor and hydraulic pump that I'm hoping to use for the tractor. Uh, a couple of things to notice right away here. Um, I know this motor was originally mounted vertically and this is a series wound motor so you'll see it's got four power connections, two here, one here, and one over here. And the way a series wound motor works is power comes in on one end, it goes out the other end, and then in the middle you typically have some uh, connections that they're either jumpered or have a bus bar, but depending on uh, like if we went here or here uh, determines which direction it spins. So I got to make sure that this spins the right direction because unfortunately since all this was disconnected it's not really clear. Um, I would have uh, I don't want to make assumptions on this. I want to make sure it's spinning the right direction. And then down here on the pump end, it's not necessarily obvious which is the input port and which is the output port. Um, there's really no markings on there. Now, convention says that the larger port is the intake, so that would be this one here. Also, this looks like, oh, just basically a big rubber tube, like a radiator tube or something. So that would make sense that that was the low pressure side. Whereas on the other end, we've got some metal fittings and some, you know, kind of real official uh, hydraulic lines. Um, in general, uh, it's my understanding that the pumps usually spin clockwise from the shaft end. So my first guess is that I need this pump motor to spin this direction. But probably the easiest way to test this is to take off these bolts so that I can pull the pump motor off. Um, I can check everything over on the motor. Um, I can check to make sure that this end is the suction end and take it from there. So once the pump's off there, we can see the shaft is a, it's a male connection on the pump side that's sort of a slotted connection and there's a bunch of grease around it. And then that it goes into the electric motor, which has a female uh, matching sort of a notch connection. I just wiped a bunch of the grease off of here and it spins freely. Uh, it's nice and smooth. I just found something very interesting here. It's really obvious that the direction this should spin is clockwise. I'll show you why. So now that we got the light hitting it right in the grease off of there, you can tell that on the right hand side uh, is shiny. So obviously when this is spinning, it's spinning like that to put the uh, working edge on that side. Clockwise rotation as viewed from the end. Now if we uh, take a look at the motor instead here, uh, the first thing we'll do is take off this. This is just a cover uh, which protects the commutator end. So all that does is keeping stuff out of there. But if we take it off, we can see what's going on. We can see uh, when it's spinning, everything like that. Note to self, time lapse this. With that cover off, we can get in here, we can take a look at the brushes. So generally looking at a motor, just make sure everything is uh, still well connected, looks solid. Check the uh, how tall the carbon brushes are. Um, for any kind of a light rebuild, I would uh, clean up the commutator, maybe just use some really, really light grit sandpaper, take a pick and you know, clean out the, the grooves between the bars here. Uh, this is kind of neat. These springs here, these are a style of spring that it keeps the uh, same amount of pressure on the brush no matter how worn down it is or not. And I also like that these are completely removable. You can just pull them off, set them to the side, and then after you do that, you can uh, pull the brush right out. Uh, these brushes are looking uh, pretty good 
overall. Um, other than that, they're uh, starting to get worn down a bit. But it looks fine here on the commutator end. So with these four power connections on here, you got to remember this is DC. DC only has two poles, positive and negative. So the way these work is generally you've got power coming in through here. It goes through the field coil, making an electromagnetic field. The other end comes to here. And then usually there's just some sort of a short jumper or sometimes it's a cable either way. And then the power goes from here through the brushes and the commutator back to here and then out and completes the circuit. Uh, the only thing is, instead of having a jumper here, if it's a power cord going from here to here, that would make it spin the other direction. So just looking at it right now, I can't tell which direction that it ought to spin. Um, but based on the pump, I know which direction I want it to spin. So I'm just going to have to hook up a jumper, uh, test it out, see if it spins the correct direction. Or if not, I'll swap the cables. So I think what I'll do is I'll connect it here just to start with, and then I'll connect my positive and negative here and here to a battery and see if it spins the right direction or not. I've got a big beefy dumb uh, battery charger that I figure I can uh, try using as a power supply. I don't know if it'll have enough oomph or not, but figure just set it to 12 volt and give it a shot. So all we really want to do here is see that it spins and that it spins clockwise. And if it doesn't, we'll move this jumper to here instead. So here we go, turning it on. Sure enough, spins clockwise. Let's try it, 24 volts. Yeah, so at 36 or 48 volts, that thing's gonna just crank. So this is the view uh, where the pump connects. Now from this end, we want the apparent direction of travel to be counterclockwise on this view. And sure enough, we got it. Okay, it is officially experiment time. I've got our hydraulic pump on the electric motor, and I have it hooked up the output to just a garden hose, but the input I've got hooked up to some clear tubes so we can see the water flow, the bubbles, all that, up to a big tub of water. And then uh, to power the electric motor, I've got our battery charger over here. Now this is only good for 10 amps, so if I find this isn't enough, I'll instead jumper cable up a big powerful battery, but we'll start with this because it's got a nice on-off switch on it mostly. And our pump here appears to be rated as six gallons per minute. Uh, so we're just gonna give this a try. We'll uh, pump water from the tub up here into this five gallon bucket and run it for a minute. Now the reason why this bucket is elevated is to be able to climb this in a typical hydraulic setup. Uh, the hydraulic tank would be above the hydraulic pump. Let's give it a shot. Looked like 55 seconds for uh, the five gallon bucket here. So we're, yeah, looks like we're five, six gallons per minute. Okay, we're gonna try this again, only this time, instead of being at 12 volts, we'll be at 24 volts. Definitely blew the fuse on the charger. It looks like uh, this thing wants to draw more than 10 amps at uh, 24 volts. 
I now got the pump cleaned up, mounted it back onto the electric motor, and I moved the whole thing. And again, this is just temporary, just checking out sizing and spacing. Uh, so under the hood of the tractor, I already set the 10 and a half inch uh, Nissan forklift motor in here about where it should go. And then I've still got some space between the end of the motor and the radiator. And again, I want to keep the radiator, the whole front of the tractor, as that's kind of a big part of the look of this whole thing. Uh, this is all built around the radiator. If you take that out, um, frankly, that eliminates the nose of the tractor, the hood, everything. Uh, really takes away a lot of the, the look and style of the entire tractor. Uh, but down here, what I did is I just slid a stool underneath, because that happened to be about the right height for what I was looking for. And this puts the pump motor, got a little bit of space here, and still a little bit of space on the other side here. Um, now if I have to move the electric motor out just a little bit more to get the flywheel to line up right, I think this is still going to fit. It's just, it's, it's going to be close, but on the other hand that also means, hey, effective use of the space, right? I do have the pump down on the bottom, and we see our pump inlet, and 90 degrees over from that is the outlet. And originally the tractor used these hard lines, so this would have been the pump on the back of the gasoline engine, and then this hard pipe coming back here to under the seat. And what else is interesting about this is this just unbolts. I don't know if I can do this while holding the camera and not dropping things. We'll find out. Uh, but the end of this is just, it's just square really. And it just goes to a spot with uh, three bolt holes um, and two holes with O-rings. So that means the end of this is just flat metal should be easy to machine. Even somebody like I should be able to machine a piece like that with a pair of holes in it that I could either uh, maybe thread and put some NPT pipe into there or uh, weld, have some connectors, and then probably just run some rubber hose up to the front. Um, you know, of course, with the good high pressure hydraulic hose coming out of there and going back. But this is really not looking too bad for the hydraulics so far. Uh, the other thing too is if we take a look at where the top of the hydraulic pump comes to, it's pretty even with the top of the transmission. So I think that should be pretty good for a battery rack um, right on top. So essentially the battery pack would just be a straight line across here. Uh, potentially if I drop that pump just a little bit lower well, the, the motor lower, the pump on the bottom here would hang down just a little lower, which I think would also be just fine. I don't think there's any issues. We, we still have plenty of clearance from the ground, and I mean, there's other things like the uh, three-point hitch in the back and stuff like that that's lower anyways. So I don't think having our hydraulic pump there lower would be an issue. So that's where we are right now with um, just the general spacing, positioning, proof of concept for an electric DC motor to drive the tractor and the PTO, and then a separate DC motor and a hydraulic pump to power the hydraulics. Essentially, it's a forklift.